Welcome to the weather forecast for Longmont, Colorado and surrounding areas for the week beginning Wednesday, May 6th. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth at Longmont Public Media. The moon this week will be full going into the weekend. We'll be passing full, but it'll be up most of the night, giving you some good light for some walks and like that. We went to the Holiday Twin drive-in theater last weekend for its opening night so you'll have some moonlight to contend with if you do catch a, a drive-in it was a fun experience it was nice to get out we were fighting rain showers this last weekend the um, two big days of rain together added up to about a half inch of rain around longmont like the forecast uh hinted at last week the rainfall was really in northern counties, northeast Colorado, Wyoming, Kansas event. Southern Colorado got missed out entirely. But some of these areas, the dark greens here are an inch and a half, yellows are two inches and more. All right, to give you the story for the weather this week, we're going to go back before this recording to early Tuesday morning, Monday night. And we have a big ridge out in the west. We have a trough out here off the uh, east coast and some weakness and troughiness in the northern plains. This is going to become a bigger part of the story. To cover again what this map is, these black lines are the 500 millibar map uh, lines or height, sorry. And that means when you go from sea level up to space, you're going from full sea level pressure at about 1,000 millibars, a little bit more, up to zero at space. So this is about halfway up in the atmosphere. They uh, ignores mountains. It ignores everything else. It just gives you a nice uh, idea of where there's more air and less air, warmer air and colder air in the troughs, colder, warmer in the ridges generally. And the airflow is parallel to these black lines. So going west to east, you can see it's going up into Canada and this line here, and then all the way down almost into Kansas. And you can trace airflow this way. But this map is also showing you how unusually high or unusually low these heights are with the shading. And so the reds, or the redder reds of the salmon color here are abnormally high heights. This is why they're having so much heat in Southern California, Nevada, and Arizona. They're hitting some records down there. And unusually cold up in New England with some snow and like that. So right now we are under northwest flow. Northwest flow is kind of interesting for Colorado and the Great Plains because you have a lot of cool air or cold air not far away. You can get ripples, little short waves, shorter ripples like this, traveling down this flow. And you can get a really quick storm, really quick cold front, and everything changes just for a day. You can get some snow when it's really cold, some rain and thunderstorms when it's a little warmer and more moisture in the air. So we are under northwest flow. We have lots of weakness in the flow pattern up here. Let's go forward to Thursday. The ridge is getting a little stronger, maybe a little stronger north on the west coast. This troughiness is a big, I wouldn't say polar vortex, but it's a big good vortex coming down out of Canada. Cold air for the eastern U.S., a big trough off the east coast. People in Florida even are going to feel this go, hey, this feels like early spring instead of summer. We have a little ridge in the central part of the nation. That's what was just sitting over us. The northwest flow continues, but on Thursday morning we have this little ripple. This is one of those short waves. It's actually a cutoff short wave, so it's an unusual little creature. I don't know how many times I see that kind of feature, but it's going to skirt right over us for a day. That'll kick down due north winds, so we'll get cold air down with a cold front. It'll be gusty uh, Thursday night into Friday. Uh, but there's not very much moisture. This ridge here is dry, this is dry. We don't expect much rain out of this, just a good windy cool down for about a day or two. By Sunday, that 
low has gone down and kind of merged out here. Another one has formed, but it's passing right now. It looks like it's passing further to the northeast of Colorado, so we'll feel less of an impact from this one. Some models have it digging down and almost doing the same thing, uh, getting close to Colorado. Here's our northwest flow still going, big ridge on the west coast, giant trough on the east coast. That's for Sunday morning. Looking next Tuesday, midday, things begin to change. The ridge is moving in, so we expect to warm up to probably our warmest temperatures. Uh, next week will be centered on Tuesday. We have an approaching trough, a large one, off the west coast. We still have this east coast trough. The northwest flow has now moved out into the Great Plains in Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley, and like that. What is interesting though, is it notice that pink or salmon color is almost gone. There's a little spot there, a little spot down there, but it means these heights are normal for this time of year. So even though it may be the warmest period in the week, it, temperatures will be very close to normal. And this interesting trough over here, this weakening of the ridge up here, it bears watching because if we go even further out, we're going to go all the way beyond next week to the week after that, May 18th, so you're middle of the month already. We see a big switch. Look at this gigantic ridge that's established in the east and a big trough in the west. So some storminess way out there uh, 10 days from now uh, is something we'll be talking about in a future video. As I said, there's not a lot of moisture with this ridge and with this passing trough. So the five-day precipitation total from the GFS shows really nothing. There's a couple spots that could be completely gone or maybe different county in the next model run. Not significant. A little bit of very light precipitation up in Wyoming and Nebraska. Going out the next 10 days, maybe that secondary trough on the weekend will amount to a little more, maybe it'll get a little more moisture in, put a little more uh, precipitation up in the mountains. I wouldn't put a lot of confidence in this. Northwest flow is pretty notorious for being shifty. So we are in the tenth to a quarter inch over the whole 10 day period. Maybe this is all coming from that big trough coming in uh, way out at 10 days. Again, not a lot of confidence in a forecast that far out, just kind of fun to show you and see what we see. Looking for the next uh, 10 days on the GFS, we see our normal high increasing here, our normal lows increasing here. Normal lows now above freezing. That doesn't mean we can't get a good frost or a good freeze at some point. Here's our Thursday cold front coming in and dip in temperatures for Friday. But into the weekend, pretty dry down here, just about normal, at least in the normal window. And on into next week, there's our about Tuesday time period, normal temperatures a little above normal after that, and then back down after that. We got a little chance of showers out here, a little chance of showers. This one's probably due to that big trough coming into the west. So far away, we'll have to check on it later. So looking at the next seven days in graphical form, dry, some clouds coming in for the weekend, a little chance of showers, not a lot, 30, 25% chance of showers at the beginning of next week. We might see a stray shower Friday night with that cold front coming in and the things that Northwest Flow can do, but wouldn't put much money on it at all. Before we go today, I would like to take a look at May severe weather in the U.S. and take a look at the Colorado and Longmont area here. Now this is any severe probability. I just want to keep it simple. This is high winds, hail, or tornadoes all combined. You can see that northeastern and eastern plains on, in Colorado have a bit of a chance, just a very slight um, occurrence of severe weather historically right along I-25 for the first week of May. If we go to the next week, you can see uh, it's chances of severe weather are starting to nudge 
their way into northern counties and up along I-25, still pretty low. Getting closer for the third week of May, and for the fourth week of May, uh, you're starting to see a pretty good chance of, relatively speaking, of severe weather out in the eastern plains and a better chance of uh, severe weather right along I-25. So we're entering severe weather season. You should have some good weather apps. And I'll try to remember to put up the names of some good weather apps next time, but all the local TV stations have weather apps. There's Storm Alert, uh, Dark Skies, just a few that come to mind. Um, but uh, those those will can be set up for notifications on your phone, so you'll buzz, you'll get on your smartwatch if you have one. Uh, just good to have something that alerts you uh, when you're inside and don't notice the skies to the west or northwest getting all dark. For more local news, please check out the Longmont Observer at longmontobserver.org. My weather column is there too, and I update that quite frequently to keep up with uh, changes in the weather and giving you some reports of what weather happened recently, like the pea-sized hail over the weekend. This has been your weather forecast for Longmont. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth for Longmont Public Media. Keep looking up.